with us now, we want to uh, welcome in Wes Graff. He's the president for the Plymouth Community Chamber of Commerce, one of my favorite downtown areas. Wes, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me today. Uh, so uh, tell us uh, when you were in the middle of a pandemic, but also a winter storm, does that impact how things are operating there in the city of Plymouth? Well, I would say, yeah, I mean, a winter storm always will, uh, and a Tuesday will also slow us down too. It's not exactly the prime day for people to be out. But with that said, um, yeah, I mean, the pandemic obviously is, you know, for us, um, our restaurants, I will give them a lot of credit. They are doing the outdoor dining and I've driven around other communities. And I mean, our folks are really trying hard. I mean, I've seen, uh, you, you know, we, we don't, uh, we don't allow, they're not allowed to be in the streets due to our uh, traffic patterns here but they're on the sidewalks. For those who are fortunate to have parking lots, um, they're doing an amazing job. I mean, Stella's Black Dog Tavern down here put up a whole new um, back covering and they added a heat, they added a big heating system to it. I mean, they're thinking beyond the pandemic because this is gonna be with us for a while, but I'll tell you, you drive around and people every night are there for dinner. It's not enough to support the restaurants, but it gets them, uh, they're giving it a big, they're giving it a real try right now. And you know, too, I because when we're looking at this, so I live in Kegel Harbor, so it's on the other side of what yep. you guys are going through, but I do go to Plymouth and Northville as well. And you look at some of these businesses, number one, some just because of how they're located or situated, they can't really take advantage of that outdoor environment yep. and some of the ease of the restrictions too that the cities have been working with them on. But on top of that too, when we're looking, um, with the, the weather conditions here in the state of Michigan, how long can they survive? You know, they surprise me in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, obviously they're on reduced staff and reduced costs. Their building owners are helping them out with rents or deferring rents. So that's a real, that's helping a lot. Um, but we're gonna, you know, people need to get vaccinated. We're gonna need to get them back in business this summer. Um, you know, from what I'm hearing slowly over the summer, it's going slower than we had hoped. Um, but I think, you know, you know I'm, everything I'm hearing says over the summer, we could be in shape to actually, uh, you know, get back to a somewhat normal by midsummer to late summer. And I'm hoping by the fall, but there'll still be some restrictions on us at that point. But anything we can do to help them out. I gotta tell you, any takeout people can do is tremendous. I, my wife and I ate out last week and she does not like the cold. And we had a wonderful time. The heaters were on and um, everybody, if you haven't tried it, it's not bad. Bring blankets, layer up, and the food stayed warm too. I will say, I'm about BYOB, bring your own blanket, right? right? That's kind of the new model now. But I also wonder, because I think people think, oh, some of these restaurants do have outdoor patios and outdoor, like we're seeing the garden sheds are very popular right now as well. But keep in mind, most of these restaurants have from two to maybe six to eight at most. Could you imagine running your business with only eight tables and you're turning them what, like maybe once an hour? Or um, maybe once, you know, really it's about once, a, about once to twice a night at the most because people are not hanging. I mean, they're not, you know, once it gets cold enough, they'll, they'll come out for dinner they won't stay out all night unless they're just out for drinks. And even then it's quick in and out because they do. It, it, there is a temperature issue after a good hour or so. But on top of it, like I think about um, the business of just the individual coming in because I'm not a planner, but I also had a situation uh, last week. So my husband works from home as well and I have a smart car and I happened to take my smart car to get my hair done. And he texts me and he said, hey, don't come home to this point in time. And I'm looking, I'm like, that's like 40 minutes. Where am I supposed to go, right? So I'm in a smart car that I haven't charged that then the reserve light comes on. So I can't turn on the heat. So I'm calling my friends. Can I come over? Can I come over? No one's home. Normally I would pop into a restaurant and maybe grab a dinner or a drink. And you can't like, I was stranded for a little bit. But on top of that, though, you're looking at the businesses and that is cumulative, right? Of these little pop-ins of people who don't plan. 
because the one thing when you're doing an igloo, you've got a plan for it. Yeah, you do. And people are not out and about as much, obviously, right now. Um, at Christmas, people were really good about shopping locally, so that helped. And these are always slow months to begin with. So, I mean, these are going to be struggling months. The hard part is they didn't have the income coming into it. But so far, we haven't had any new closures, so we're really fortunate. Um, we're going to wait and see how long they can hold up. The new PPP loans and the, the assistance of the government is essential. Um, it's getting the workers um, are getting expanded unemployment. And so that's going to help a lot um, to get them through. But at some point, we got to get them back to work. We also have to get, I mean, obviously, you know, we're going to have to, it, it has to be done safely. We can't just do it because we have to. It has to be done. And that, which I think is why vaccines are so important for us to, to get to that 70% threshold so we can get ourselves going again. Yeah, but Wes, with that too, um, if we could talk, these businesses, I feel like most of them are going above and beyond because the last thing they want mm -hmm. is an outbreak associated yep. with their establishment. So they really are taking these extra precautions knowing that and going into the winter months as well what else can be done and we're coming up on february 1st and the reopening uh, does this mean maybe hope is that hope do you think or yeah, are, are we in really anticipating there are going to be more closures and restrictions in our future as well well if these variants turn out to be what they are we could be back to it again and did a really interesting you're talking in your last segment about numbers so my chairman and I are playing around with some numbers. Michigan right now sits at 0.1% per, per 100,000 residents less in death than our neighboring state of Ohio, and I think two points less in Indiana, and somewhere between that for Wisconsin, who all have similar openings than we do. They also have higher hospitalization rates and higher case totals. So if Michigan has 10 million residents, that approximates to about 60 less deaths or families planning funerals um and, you know so the governor obviously puts a high premium on that it also those states have a one percent lower unemployment rate so they're seeing these other states are seeing an economic benefit that's a tough equation for anybody to have to figure out but when you start looking at numbers i think that's what the numbers really mean and uh, some tough decisions that public officials have to make when they're deciding because you know anytime you move that needle that means you're going to have some more hospitalizations and, and more deaths until we get the vaccines because we've done a wonderful job of improving at taking care of patients i lost my own mother from covid back in may and what happened with her and how she was treated versus what happens now is you know is is amazing i mean nothing i think could have been done to save her but it just shows you that uh, there's, you, you know, we've come a long way, but we still got to take those final steps. We still have to wear masks and wash our hands and, you know, and please for people, you know, you want to keep your restaurants open and you want to keep the stores open, please stay in your bubble. Go to dinner with people who, um, you know, go to people, go to dinner with people who are in your bubble. Don't go outside of that. When I see lots of people going together, you drop your mask, you eat. If you're not within your bubble, you're really going to be upping the chances when the variant increases. So that's that's our big request is try and stay within your bubble when you go out to eat and you go out around town. Oh, Wes, I, my condolences on your mother. It's it's so hard to lose a parent. Uh, I lost my mother as well, not to COVID, but it's still a, not an easy transition. And with that too, when that's the one thing that um, I'm kind of interested in when we talk about the bubble, because while they're asking people when they're renting these sheds and this, that, and the other, you really kind of need to have a group of people to go to help support the cost, because um, some places are requiring minimums to be able to, re, um, you know, even be able to utilize those yeah. Um, entities, and we understand that, right? Because the businesses have a cost association as well. But on top of that, like, if I'm going to do six people in my family, we're doing a Sunday dinner, right? Like, I'm not going out to a restaurant where it's going to cost me so much. So we know people are not staying within their cohorts per se. Right. They're coming together because that's a way for the friends to come together. Um, so with that too, do you think that these sheds and these outdoor igloos and stuff, will they continue? 
And are they even effective, really? Well, they're, I think they're very effective if you stay within your cohort. I mean, you know, once you, you, you know, I, they, they say, you know, go with two, you, you, know, you, know, you know, right now you're not supposed to actually technically go if it's not, it's two, it's supposed to be from two different households. And hopefully those are two households that are somewhat in a cohort together or an understanding of, you know, how they, how they handle COVID so that they're, they're not potential victims of it. Um, I mean, it's really tough right now. I mean, a lot, you know, but we just have to, you know, the, the, if, if we insist on going with like five, six, eight different people, we're really upping our odds. And um, if you want to keep our restaurants open, go out and use them, but please use them with people who are in your cohort because then they will stay open. We'll keep our numbers low. Really, Wes, Wes Graff here with us on the Megacast. He's the president for the Plymouth Community Chamber of Commerce and really one of the best walkable communities that we have here. Uh, what uh, we have so much focus right now on the restaurants but there are so many other businesses that are directly impacted on this and i think about your community plymouth because it is a walkable community if i'm not going to dinner like um i would normally or i would go get my hair done there and then i would go to the home store and then maybe i would say hey to my girlfriend who lives in the neighborhood let's meet and let's have lunch and a drink. So when you're taking out that, it's not just the restaurants, it's these other businesses that could be suffering as well. Yeah, there's safe ways to do that though, too, if you think about it. I mean, you know, you can, I mean, I've had people over and we keep our distance from each other. Um, I've been out with people. Plymouth's a great walkable town. Our park is still available. A lot of people will go get coffee and then get together in the park and sit at a distance. It's really great to see, or they'll sit on two different park benches um and you can still walk around town you can wear your masks when you're you know when you're when you're within six feet i mean there's a lot of ways to do it if we can do that though in in for all our businesses we can keep them open and that's really got to be our goal because we're all in this together i you know that you know the, the restaurants are frustrated because i'm doing everything right and they're always the ones because the mask dropped they're the most it's the most vulnerable place um just about that we're allowed to go but if we could just do our part all of us because if you know they're doing their part they really are they're spaced six feet apart they're doing the right things we need to help them out and do the right things too and we can make this work for everybody and get our economy rolling because it's not just them i mean we have fitness facilities are really hurting right now um obviously any of our theater groups unfortunately the government's providing some assistance for businesses that end up being a higher probability of um of transmission but I, I beg everyone just do your part and you'll help us all out and we'll, we'll get out of this together it really is about we're in this uh, together uh, so um wes i'll have to show you though because when we talk about the mask um my sister came up with a mask and it was really for our family and it's like a double layer one that you it's two layers so you peel it back Mm -hmm. But then there's a bottom layer that still covers your nose and then you can eat and drink out of it. So I'll have to send you one. <laughs> so that kind of takes out like the mask thing or and while, of course, it doesn't, um, you know, eliminate all uh, the exposure from COVID-19. It definitely is that second layer. So when people say you have to take off your mask, well, no, actually, you don't. But I'll send you one uh, with that, though. Um, I have to ask you about one of my favorite events there in the city of Plymouth um, is the huge ice festival that, how is it changing this year? Is it going on, first of all? It is, it's gonna be, it's gonna be on Valentine's Day weekend. COVID's been, re, uh, COVID has changed everything. It's all, but we're a very COVID conscious community. I think we've handled it as, as well as we can. We don't create, so what this is, is there's about 60, smaller sculptures that will be around town one to two blocks of ice i think it's gonna be one three block sculpture um in the park there'll be some interactive ice which is that you know kids can uh you know could get on for a second and, and sit on it or something and uh if they're wearing gloves it should be okay um it'll be monitored so we're you, you know you know the idea of this is to keep people moving so that you don't get that 15 minutes um directly with somebody and then it'll give you a chance to either pick up something to eat while you're here, stop in a store. Um, they are gonna do a little contest with passports. You can go into the different stores. Um, you might be patient because they are at 30% capacity. 
Um, but we want to do something for our downtown and get that spirit back. And it'll be great also just to, just to see the ice sculptures back again. Even the small ones are very well done and I really encourage people to come out and take a look at them. Well, the good thing about that um, event is it is mainly outdoors. And so people come dressed for the weather as well. And so just know that dressing for the weather also includes maybe possibly eating and drinking outdoors as well this year. Right, or get a cup of coffee, get something to go and take it with you, you know, but it, and it's a 24 hour event. So, I mean, if you, you're so up at two o'clock in the morning and you want to see ice, come on down. We're happy to have you come over here and take a look. So the ice will be up all the time. I will tell you, it was um, the ice sculptures are amazing. I've been lucky enough to cover mm -hmm. it in uh, previous years as a reporter for um, who knows? I think I was at Fox too. I was doing that crazy uh, weekend morning show, uh, but um, it, it you want to talk about an artist to watch these people take a block of ice yep. with chainsaws and turn it in to these amazing pieces of art. It really is um, something that you would appreciate going forward. Uh, hey, Wes, great to have you with us. Anything maybe I didn't ask that you wanted to include before we let you go? No, I think, I mean, I, I think we talked about, I think the big thing to hopefully everyone can, can remember is just, you know, we're all in this together. We can make the, we, we can make the difference together if we just give this a try. And I encourage you to come down, enjoy the ice festival, enjoy Plymouth, play it safe. And we're all going to get back on track here, hopefully by late to midsummer. So again, the uh, ice festival, though, just so people don't, um, if you don't know, is not until Valentine's weekend, February 12th through the 14th. If you haven't been, you want to go. And let's hope we have the super cold, snowy weather that we're having uh, today as well. Absolutely. Let's have those temps. Actually, it's best if it's a little cloudy, upper 20s, <laughs> the best weather for us. You know, I used to do weather, so I'll do a weather dance for you. Sounds good. <laughs> Wes Kraft with us here on the Megacast. He's the president for the Plymouth Community Chamber of Commerce.